Hi everyone, I want to welcome you to the Church of the Generations. I am one of the pastors here, I'm Trisha, and I want to welcome you guys. I know for some of the students, you guys got a three-day weekend this weekend, so you got an extra day. Um, I'm jealous for that. I remember when I had that, and it's so, it's, oh, this is the greatest feeling, being able to like sleep in, do whatever I want, extra free day. Because we all know that when we are in school, we get our homework on Sunday, the last day possible. But um, for the visitors that are here, I want to welcome you. Um, if For the members here, if you guys are sitting around somebody that you don't know, take a moment just to get to know them. Um, and now that we've already done that, we are going to dive into prayer. Um, so everyone, if you could bow your heads. Lord, I just thank you for this wonderful day, and I thank you for... Um, who you've called us to be and for allowing us to come and gather freely to hear what you have to say in your word. Thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. Um, I want to dive right into the scripture. Um, but before that, I want to tell you guys a little bit about what we're going to be talking today about. We're going to, the message is titled, Who Are You in Christ? And that's a question, obviously. But following that are three points that we're going to go through. Um, to try to figure out, because I want to I share a story with you. I was with my friend the other day, and we were just talking about, you know, because I'm a girl, we talk about girl stuff, like, oh, like your hair, like your shoes, it's cute, where'd you get those shoes, they're new. And then um, another one of our friends walked by, and we weren't gossiping about her, but she just walked by, and my friend was like, hey, do you know her? She's just such a good Christian, such a good Christian. And I was like, oh, yeah, she's really cool. And so I want to talk to you guys about what it means to be a Christian. What does it mean when people say, oh, yeah, they're really cool, they're really good Christian. And so this message, these three points are going to help define for you guys what it means to be a good Christian. And not in, um, not in the context of somebody's personal opinion of you, but we're going to go straight to the scriptures and see what the Bible says and what it means to be a good Christian according to what God says. So our first um, our first verse, it's going to kind of headline and kind of map out our three points for us, is in Ephesians 1, 16 through 20, and it says, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This, this is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. So that's the verse that um, is going to kind of, like I said, outline and map out our three points. But the first point is you are called. And I'm going to go straight to a different scripture. Um, it's further along in the book of Ephesians. And it says, and this is Paul talking to the people of Ephesus. Ephesians is a letter written to the people of Ephesus. Um, and so he says, in chapter 4, verse 1, he says, Therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. And so I want to first explain what does it mean? What does it mean when people say, oh, you are called, you are anointed, you have a calling on your life? Um, I know not all of us are regular churchgoers. Um, and so for you guys, I want, to, I want to explain to you what it means to be called. It means that you know what you should be doing. You, like, in your, for the students here, it means like knowing, kind of like having your life mapped out, knowing, hey, yeah, I want to be a firefighter, or I want to be a pastor, or I want to be a teacher. Um, but it also means knowing what you're called to do, knowing what you're supposed to be doing in your everyday life. Maybe, hey, you notice that your friend is having a rough day. Maybe you should pray for them, you know? Um, and... How do we, and so we go from knowing what we should be doing to how do we know what, what we should be doing. And how do we know is by reading the Bible, spending time in prayer, talking to God, um, constantly developing a deeper relationship with God. And not only that, but it, it also factors into who you have as friends. 
Um, I personally have chosen, um, I, I have friends, but I also have a couple good, really close friends. And for me, when I was in school, um, I had to do an internship, and I was trying to figure out where I should do my internship. And um, some doors opened at this church, and so I, I asked if I could be an intern there, and um, everything was looking good, and I met up with the pastor, and the meeting just did not go well. It it, it just didn't go well, and I left, like, stressed out of my mind. I was flustered. I had a lot of anxiety, and I was like, okay, you know what? Maybe this is a sign that that this isn't what I should be doing, that this isn't what I'm called to do. And so I got back home after that meeting, and, and I talked to a couple of my good close friends, and I was like, you know what? This meeting, it didn't go well. I need an internship. I don't know where else I'm going to do it. Um, and so, but... One thing that I noticed was with every close friend that I talked to, um, and that includes my mom because we we have a great relationship. I love her to death. Um, each person asked, "Well, why don't you do it at the city church?" And um, at that time, I was a member there, and I was volunteering and I was involved. And I don't know why it didn't cross my mind that I should be an intern at the church I'm I'm a member of. And so I was like, "Oh, I don't, I don't know. I just." know if it would work out and and with with each person they immediately said that and so that kind of recognized oh maybe that is what I'm called to maybe that is what I should be doing and so I just wanted to share that with you guys to give you an example of maybe an example of what it looks like or maybe one way that shows how you are called and I would um dive into the second point or actually not yet Hold on a second. Um, but I know that when we walk in this calling, sometimes it's overwhelming. Sometimes, you know, God calls us to things and you're like, oh, I don't want to do that. That's a little scary. You've taken a step outside your comfort zone. But I know that in, in the book of Philippians, it says that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And with that, I want to um, dive back into the first verse that we talked about in, in Ephesians 1. Um, in verse 18, it says, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people who are rich and glorious, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. And so that's kind of to segue into our second point that says you are provided for. And I want to read verse to you for you in Ephesians, or I'm sorry, in um. 2 Corinthians, I'm going to jump to that because I want to use my Bible because I believe that it is living and active and that we should always read it daily. Um, verse, chapter 13, chapter 3, I'm sorry, verse 13 and 14, and it says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole. And in this translation, it's the NIV, the pole simply means the cross. Um, and it goes on to say, he redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles, which in our everyday terms means us, unless you're like naturally born Jewish descendant, um, Gentiles means us, um, through Christ Jesus, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. And so... And so I want to show you that Christ has redeemed us. Um, I lost my spot. One sec. Um, Christ has redeemed us, and we are able through that, through Christ redeeming us, we are freely able to live in that freedom. We are able to have a right relationship with God through having through Jesus' death on the cross. Um, and I want to jump over to the last point, the third point. Um, and it is in 2 Corinthians, and it says, And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. And so I just want to show you that God is your provider. He is everything you need. He is always going to be everything you need. And I want to point out in this verse that 
it doesn't say what God will provide for you, but he says that God will provide, but that's just to show that God will provide you with food. God will provide you with finances. It doesn't limit what God will provide for you. Um, and I want to share an example of an example in my life that God has provided for me. Um, I shared with you guys a couple weeks ago that I um, was able to go on the Israel trip, but I never explained how I was able to go on it. Um, I I um, had to work my butt off, honestly. Um, but I want to explain how. I think that, or I know that God provided for me, because God doesn't always, um, you hear people being like, yeah, I really need money to pay rent, or to go on this mission trip, and then they find like a check in the mail, or or somebody just walks up to them and says, you know, hey, I, I really feel like God's calling me to give you <laughs> this money, I know that you're needing it for your mission trip, I want to bless you with that, um, but that's not what it was like for me. Um, it, what God's provision looked like for me in that circumstance was God providing me jobs. I was a nanny last year, and um, he provided me the nanny jobs that I needed, and I worked them. So it was, it was a relationship, because we always have a relationship with God um, as Christians, and we're continually and actively um, developing that deeper. Um, so I were, he provided the jobs, and I worked and I worked every second I could. I saved every penny I could because, like girls, we when we go on vacation for Israel, um, I like to shop. I'm a girl. I like to shop, so I needed my spending money. And so during school, I saved every penny I could in order to in order to not only pay for the trip but also to have a little spending money. Um, and I'm, like I said, I'm sharing this story with you. Um, not only to show that God's provision isn't always easy to notice, but he is, but that he is always a provider. So I don't know what kind of circumstances that you're going through. Um, maybe, you know, like I, like I already shared, maybe it's hard to pay rent right now. I know for college students, um, getting out of college or even during school, it's, it's hard to pay rent and work and to have a social life. And to, um, maybe if you're a ministry major, get involved in a church and then, and then do full-time school, or maybe if you're a business major, um, you know, having an internship and trying to get in the hierarchy of, of a business, and it's hard, and um, I think it's a good reminder to remember that you are always provided for. And so I want to jump into the third point that is, that is, states that you are redeemed. And I already shared this verse with you, but I'm going to share it again. It's Galatians 3, 13 through 14. And it states, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung up, who is hung on a pole, cross. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles, us, through Christ Jesus, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. And so, like I had already stated, um... God, God has died on the cross for us to save our soul. He died to give us a free choice and a free will to choose to have, develop a deeper relationship with him. Um, so I want to show you that because since you're called, you're provided for. When you're called, God will always provide for you. He's not going to give you something you can't handle. Like it says in Philippians, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Um, and because you're called and you're provided for, you're redeemed by Jesus, by Jesus' death on the cross. But that's not in the right order. It's Jesus died on the cross for you so that you could be saved, so that you could be provided for. And notice that God is the underlying theme in all of that. And so I just want to recap for, for the members that are here. You are called, and I think it's important to remember maybe the calling that God's placed on your life. Maybe you kind of strayed from that, and it's time to come back. Um, I want to recap on the second point and state that we are provided for. And then the third point is that we, we are redeemed. We are given a free life in exchange for Jesus. Um, and so with that thought, I want to challenge the members that are here um, to maybe look into what, what needs to change in your life or maybe what you're doing well, or 
do you need to develop a deeper relationship with God? And for the members, or for the visitors here that, that don't know who this guy is that died and um, saved a life for you and died to save your life, I want to give you a chance to um, come into a relationship with him and get to know him and develop a relationship with him. So if we could take this time to bow our heads and pray, that would be great.